Hi, my name is Joel Tilke, and this is my first motivational memo. I thought I'd try something new. Basically, it's an audio blog, or I guess you can call it an og. I don't know. I'll be playing with this concept, and to be honest, it's kind of nice, just because I'm sitting here in my sweats and t-shirt, and I don't have to be camera ready. It just feels a lot more relaxed. So I hope you like it. And today, we're going to talk about why humans commonly fear the future. We've all experienced fear of the unknown or the future, whether it's a presentation next week at work or fear of losing your job or a relationship. The list, it can go on and on. When there's fear of the future, the human mind can't distinguish between real or perceived danger. As a result, our mind kicks into this protective mode, better known as the fight or flight response. It's an unconscious response, but it's real all the same to us. Our body and mind can't distinguish. So in severe cases, this response can cause panic attacks, but for most people it causes severe to mild anxiety, that nagging thing that you can't quite see. There's a chemical reaction that's happening because the mind can't identify the danger. So for example, let's use job security or fear of losing your job. You might have a new boss, either someone you know or someone who's coming in unknown to you. Our mind starts to go to that worst case scenario, or I call it the what ifs. What if they don't like me? Mm, I might be the first one that gets fired. Then our mind starts coming up with reasons or speculating on why they wouldn't like me. Maybe you have that presentation coming up and again, we go into that what if. What if I freeze or look stupid or my lip does that weird thing when I'm nervous? Then you start compounding the what ifs and the consequences of all the what ifs is that it becomes a domino effect. It compounds those multiple fears on top of each other. The fear of the unknown is when fight or flight kicks in and we either run or we fight. If you look at it from an outside perspective, you might think, oh, that's silly or irrational. But in this day and age, we don't have the same level of danger from predators that our ancestors had that prompted them. And that gave us this evolutionary response. Our brains have not evolved as fast as our civilization has. Again, the brain can't distinguish between real and perceived danger. What can we do to interrupt this fear? Number one, identify the feelings. Where do they reside in your body? When you have this sense of impending doom or feeling anxious, ask yourself, why do I feel this way? Try to identify the feelings, i.e. fear. What is the fear? Is it real? Once you recognize it, then you can clarify it. So, for example, I'm afraid I'm going to look stupid, or I'll embarrass myself. My boss will hate me. Maybe I'll get fired. Our unconscious mind and conscious mind need to work this out. Once you're able to identify what's going on with you, you're able to take the actions or steps to interrupt the unconscious patterns that is creating that fear. Number two, put it all down on paper. Start with, these are all of the things I'm afraid of. Let yourself go to the worst situation that can happen. Putting it all into words allows the brain to give it a structured perspective. It allows us to see the unseen worries. Now, number three, categorize rational or irrational. Go down your list of worries or fears and ask yourself, is this rational or irrational? Quickly see that your list of concerns starts to get really short. When it gets short, you should start to get clarity. Number four, what is my game plan? The good news about this process is you might see some real ways that you can alleviate the fear and anxiety. You can see that you can affect the outcome, whereas before you were just a helpless bystander. Now you can see a plan of action that'll make a difference. Number five, take charge of the future. The best way to empower yourself is to take control of the process and don't leave anything to chance. You've identified what's important so you can now concentrate on your goals and see where potential obstacles might be that are in the way of you achieving that outcome desire. Six, breathe deep. Now that you understand what's causing the fear of the future, you can relieve the anxiety and stress by connecting to what's underneath it all. It could be as simple as taking five to ten minutes to yourself, sit there quietly, and connect to your breath. You can do that throughout the day. If you notice, we don't breathe deep. Most of us take these short, shallow breaths that can lead to anxiety just in itself because it models the fight-or-flight response. Now, you can look more into diaphragmatic breathing. I have a process for it, but it's out there on the Internet. Next step, visualize your future. 
A visualization is a potent tool for success. You can combine this with your deep breathing if you wish. There's a reason that top athletes and performers use visualization as a standard practice. It allows you to practice the outcome that you desire. You can do this on your own just by getting comfortable closing your eyes and finding that deep, rhythmic breath. Then in your mind, go through the future event. Practice the outcome that you want. Go through it over and over. See it. Hear it. Feel it. Make the visualization as rich as possible. The subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between this and reality. It's taking it on as it's a real event. If you have trouble settling in or finding yourself too distracted, there's a lot of great guided hypnosis programs that are downloadable. They're designed to help you with relieving fear and anxiety while also working with you at the subconscious level to change your limiting beliefs, replacing them with empowering ones, leaving you focused and relaxed. There is no right road to eliminating that fear of the future, but there are many empowering roads that lead you to your desired future. So there you go. Let me know how you like this format, or if you have any questions, you can DM me, email me, please follow and subscribe. And I will try and get back to your comments or questions as quickly as possible. I'm Joel Tilke, Motivational Hypnotherapy, and this is my Motivational Memo. 